Hello everyone and welcome to Outriders Watch Layer. In today's video I'm going to share with you an anomaly power pyromancer build with the best potential fastest timers even at this early game build without having all apocalypse tier mods and using the Akari set to take a few advantage of some anomaly power creatures although I do believe this could work even without the Akari set although I haven't found the proper gear for now to test it but getting the Akari set isn't as hard I'm using one legendary piece without any apocalypse gear and the two others have bad apocalypse mods that we don't take advantage so it works very well even in early game you clear expeditions very fast and you have excellent single target DPS even against the last Arbiter in the Taria Gratar. As always, let's begin with our skills. Heatwave, because we need to take advantage of the Akari set. Now this was nerfed, before it was 50% anomaly power boost per enemy hit, now it's 25% per enemy hit. I think this has a cap to 10 enemies, so you can get a maximum of 250%, which is still good, but we don't actually need so much anomaly power increase. That's why, spoiler, we're using only one hit wave that makes the rotation much easier. So this is why we use this. Now, the combination of Ash Blast and Overheat is what will give us a maximum number of damage. Ash Blast is awesome because it inflicts Ash in most of the enemies. And thanks to Master Consumer, a mod that will allow to consume Ash and Burn, you will use Overheat to decimate a whole map every few seconds and it will also give us a, the best tool for single target DPS. Now, let's have a look at our armor and mods. We're using the head, the chest and the legs of the Akari because all three pieces have anomaly power as a primary attribute and we need to focus on this to maximize our anomaly power as much as possible. That being said, for gloves and boots we need something with anomaly power, status power and then one of those must have cooldown reduction and the other must have status power, skill life, like something like that. That being said, I have both gloves and boots with max health because I have 3 out of 3 mods that I'm using including the apocalypse mod and I have good secondary attributes. That's why you should prioritize these mods and attributes other than the primary attribute. I made it compromise, sacrificed around 300,000 basic anomaly power but I'm still looking for the best gloves and that's why this is a starter build and not a fully optimized build. Let's have a look at each individual item at a time. The head of the Akari has a not good apocalypse mod that we're not taking any advantage. We're not using thermal bomb, but we don't care. We have the fire tsunami as a default. Increase the weight of the firewall. Yeah, that's what we want. And burnout. I have tested some mods, including ash and boost that you won't find here. And I wanted something consistent for single target DPS because for AOE, we don't need anything else. We need something to focus for single target to kill the last Arbiter and certain bosses. Burnout is perfect, 50% extra damage. We won't stack it up to two times most of the time because we're using one hit wave because it makes our rotation much smoother. I will explain later. For the chest, we're using the detonator, which is a must use in this setup. 50% cooldown reduction for overheat. This will take the overheat below five seconds for 0.9, which is ideal. We can spam the skill for a way in single target DPS. That's why it's good. No resistance against the Fortify, the new must mode for all anomaly power builds. 100% of armor piercing becomes resistance piercing. Even if you have 30% from your weapon and 10% from the Ascension mode, that's 40% resistance pierce and it's more than enough. Perseverance Shield is not the worst, but I would prefer to replace this with either no survivability mods or damage absorber. We're going to look at the alternate modes later. For the legs, I'm using the legendary piece, without any apocalypse here, of the Akari. Anomaly Echo uh, left it out because it, it had irradiation weakness, inflicting weakness to enemies, and I wanted to combine this with other mods I'm going to share with you, however. For example, the Arbiter isn't getting affected by weakness a long time, and you won't take advantage of the weakness, that's why I replaced it and left Anomaly Echo. Bullet Kindling, because I want the best mods for single target DPS once again and this will help us to deal even more damage against bosses while inflicted by burn. For the hands I'm using Heat Seeker because they have 3 out of 3 mods that I'm looking for. Ash increase range and death sentence is the best combination for Ash Blast. It increases the radius by 50% and it debuffs the enemies to take 30% extra anomaly damage. It's excellent to debuff the enemies and bosses and everything and turn up the heat is one of the best new tier 3 
overheat mods allows us to activate overheat two times before the cooldown. This is excellent compared to heat wave that there is a delay between the two waves that you have to shoot. You can basically spam overheat two times without any delay. It has no internal cooldown, that's why we, ally, we like the turn of the heat. For the boots of the Akari, it has unstoppable force, the best combination with no resistance against the fortified, that's why we're using those. 50% of resistance piercing is converted to anomaly power, that's why we like this. Master Consumer, a must overheat mod in combination with Ash Blast and Burn. This can make a lot of things and I will explain a little bit with our talents because with the new mods and Master Consumer we can do a lot of crazy things against the bosses, that's why we destroy them. And Captain Hunter once again to focus on damage against elites. For the weapons, we need actually two weapons, we're not going to use the sidearm, we don't care. We're using the sidearm with the highest level possible so we can increase our average item level as much as we can. Primary weapon, we need something with armor pierce, status power, skill it is ideal but in case you don't find it, don't care. We need an apocalypse mod, mage's rage or fortress and add the second. This way we have the best weapon for single target or away, a couple of criticals, proc fortress and you will be able to get a lot of extra damage for both anomaly power and damage in general so we don't care about the primary mode. If you find something good, for example, the best in slot weapon is probably the hair to the desert. It has a very good primary mode and it has the best attributes, armor piece, status power and skill life reach. I wasn't lucky with my drops, but I do consider myself lucky with a Runner Umbra. Secondary weapon, we need something that has armor pierce. We need status power and skill life leads, but if you don't find prioritize armor piece, a decent other apocalypse mod or hair to mod such as vulnerable bullets will be very good if you use for the weapon. And we add Firestorm. This is the single target DPS mod because it inflicts a lot of damage, but it inflicts burn. This combination with overheat, you can, that's why we have the double overheat, it inflicts burn, so we'll take full advantage of the second overheat, and because we take our skills back, because of the pax tree, we inflict another two overheat, huge damage, that's why we have very good single target DPS because of Firestorm. Without this mod, you cannot do very good single target DPS. Let's move on to the talents. Now, I tested a lot of combinations now, and we don't actually need Wards Ablaze because our skill cooldown for overhead is already 4.9 seconds. We don't need to go any lower. And we need to focus on the Tapestry. We take all these talents, and I have taken Phoenix Nestling for two reasons. One, I don't have any survivability mods because of I was unlucky a little with my drops. And two, this is actually a second chance in case you get a Lux Spike, you get unlucky with your cooldowns, you mess up a little bit and you won't be able to die. It's a second chance for every once or twice per expedition and a lot of times in Tari Agartar. We take all the way up to Ashbreaker to get the hot situation and to get Conflagration. That being said, you could sacrifice Phoenix Nestling to get with Fire and Anomaly, although Blood Bowl could be a little per better because this would translate for more damage for Overheat and Resistance Piercing and Anomaly Power. That's why I have to believe this could be a little better. However, I do prefer Phoenix Nestling. You don't need to go all the way to damage. When you die here in now, as we level up Apocalypse here, you lose XP. So just take Phoenix Nestling to have the second chance. Moving on to the Pax Tree. We're going all the way to Pyromaniac except for the trigger sequence. Unfortunately, we cannot take advantage of this trigger sequence because we don't have any other explosive skill so we cannot, for example, set up a good eruption or a good overheat. We're not using any other explosion skills. That being said, you cannot take conduction because with 3 out of 4 pieces after 65, 66 level with cooldown reduction, you have reached the maximum cap for global cooldown reduction and you cannot further reduce the, the cooldowns of your skills unless it's from the talents. These talents, not the pack tree. So this is a useless talent, that's why I'm not going with Ashernist. I want the backdraft, 30% more anomaly power for its skill on cooldown, this way overheat will hit with even more anomaly power. And of course, the melting point, Master Exploder, that's why we need resistance spacing, and Convection. Now, you could of course go for Scorch, Flesh or Furnace, although they're not as good as, for example, going for Kamini Hot, 50% more damage, for enemies above 80% health and more execute damage for enemies below 30% health. This is actually ideal in combination with Extinction to deliver more damage for enemies below 30% health. 
and let's have a look at the unchanging priority. Now we're going for anomaly. Anomaly damage it should be number one. Number two should be resistance pierce. Number three, anomaly power. Number four, armor pierce. And then we focus a little bit on either status power to further increase the duration of ash and burn and burn damage. Then we go for damage against the elites and then we go for some sort of ability. I got for armor and then I'm going for resistance. I don't need anything else for, for damage, although we don't take advantage for cooldown reduction. It's a useless talent for now because we have a lot of pieces with cooldown reduction and we cannot critical with our skills. That's why this could be useless. After we take everything, now I will focus everything in endurance, resistance, max health, elite mitigation and healing received. And then I'm going to focus on skill leech and a little bit of brutality and magazine size. Let's have a closer look at the alternate armor modes we're going to use and three are missing. So best survivability mode, once again, damage absorber, extra armor, 10% resistance, one of the best, if not the best survivability mode you can get. With this, you will go around 68 to close to 70% with essential levels to physical damage reduction. So it's very good. If you don't find this, Circle of Power is excellent, it boosts your resistance by 30% against bosses such as Moloch that deal mostly anomaly damage, this is ideal. Or you can go with self mitigation to get 30% extra health which can help you survive against many situations. But we're going to focus a little bit on more damage for the three missing pieces. And if you find trouble surviving, we can add any of the three for survivability. My number one choice I'm looking for is Power Simulation flat increasing anomaly power for each elite present on the battlefield worst case scenario is one when you face boss however this can be three times four times depending on how many for example in Moloch it starts with three times the amount because it has two elites and Moloch on the battlefield arms and anomaly is the second best because we will go for critical shots to trigger mage's rage so that will give us a lot of anomaly power and apart from that there are not many other tier 3 mods to further increase your damage, uh, danger close, we don't care, we're going mostly in long range or medium range, so we will rarely take advantage of this. And other mods such as Burning Passion is pretty bad, 30% chance to reapply every status effect. We don't care, we have the Firestorm to reapply the burn and we have pretty good cooldowns thanks to our skills and that's why we don't like this and hit grenades is pretty bad. I have tested this with a hit seeker set and it, it's pretty bad, it doesn't offer a lot of damage increase. For tier 2 mods, something decent could be Ashen Boost, however, I have tested this with and without Ashen Boost. It's not necessary for now, this could boost a little bit your damage against certain elites and bosses that you will inflict Ash for a brief period of time, 12% is actually pretty good, so I would try this and see how it goes, although first try other different things and then resort to Ashen Boost. And for the tier 1 mods, for Ash Blast, nothing else seems very good. I could try Empowerment to see if it's worth it or not. However, I want to try certain things for Overheat. My first choice would be Phoenix Force to further increase our anomaly power every time we consume a, a status that stacks up to 10 times. This is like 260,000 anomaly power with our current level, which is a lot. So this is my first priority probably. And other things I want to try is something like sunburn to further increase the base damage of overheat to see if it's significantly increased or if it's not. My ideal combination that I want to try would be for the three extra moves would be power assimilation, probably ashen boost and phoenix force. For the weapons, we don't have so many options for other type of mods. We need mage rage, fortress, and we prioritize these two. We don't care for the first and because there are not so many tier 3 weapons that meet our criteria with armor pierce status power so we cannot change this in case you find a epic piece that will have a tier 2 or tier 1 mod i would prioritize having something with single target dps or i would like improve vulnerability bullets because this way you will inflict vulnerability uh, for your weapon every time you shoot the enemy and all the other things 50 percent extra damage is always nice something like bone shrapnel or claymore would be actually pretty decent or anything that does basically damage but my first priority would be if i find something for id like improved vulnerability bullets for tier one mods uh, even vulnerability bullets could be good although they have eight seconds cooldown i don't know how much our duration is because we have very decent status power and the same goes for the secondary weapon 
Firestorm and I would add if I found for example improved vulnerability bullets or vulnerability bullets for the first or apocalypse mode and of course if we get lucky for example have something like this yes we prioritize or if we have Firestorm for example at our apocalypse mode and let's say we have the ideal Firestorm vulnerability bullets and we can replace for a tier 3 mod I would add something that deals a lot of damage without the criticals or hit something that will just shoot for example something like ultimate storm whip or sandstorm because they deal a lot of damage with minimum investment or ravenous locusts it's a secondary weapon we will use it every 10 seconds or more because it's only for the single target DPS against bosses and elites and that's why we do it. Don't use Omen for the secondary weapon, it takes 3 seconds to charge up uh, so that you won't take advantage of that and also it's very bright for now. Avoid that and don't use it for now. Another mod I would be very interested to try for my primary weapon that has made this race and fortress finally, Relativity Theorem. That critical shots reduce one random skill cooldown by 10% every 2 seconds, so I don't know how good this is. Although we can spam our skills, this can help us more. I don't know if it's worth it, but I'm very interested to try it. Let's talk about our rotation, which is pretty straightforward, and the reason we're using one hit wave, it's basically because of our pack tree. We need to take advantage fully of the convection and to spam our hardest hitting skill, which is overheat now. We, oh, we can open with heat wave or overheat depending on the situation. We open with heat wave if we can go near to the enemies or with overheat if the enemies are very far away because they interrupt them and they get stunned for a brief second. You can open with double overheat to gain some distance and go closer to the enemy where you will use heat wave, ash blast, ideally when overheat is already ready because this way you will be able to overheat, overheat, take back heat wave and overheat because of our pack tree and rinse and repeat, hit wave with overheat. Between those two, if you face elites, just make a couple of shots with your primary weapon to proc mages, rays and fortress. Thankfully, you can still aim and use Ash Blast and overheat, so two out of three skills can be used while aiming or shooting, so take full advantage of that. For single target DPS, we make only one change and switch to our secondary weapon to apply Firestorm. This way, the elites or bosses will take a lot of damage and get inflicted by burn every time Firestorm hits for, for 8 seconds. This way we can do the same rotation, however overheat will always hit the enemy and consume a status effect, that's why it will deal a lot of damage. However, overheat can actually hit much higher than you can expect because of our talents. Let's explain how this works. As you can see in the talents we have something that is called incinerate. The moment burn ends on an enemy, it will inflict ash. This is very important, because we have the firestorm that will inflict burn and ash to the enemy. The first ash because of the ash blast hit wave and the firestorm, the first overheat we hit for 150% extra damage thanks to master consumer. Once we hit the first overheat, it will consume the burn and inflict ash to the enemy for a second time. And because of the firestorm, it will also inflict burn. So after we wait a split second, because if you do it very fast, you won't take maximum effect of the status effect, and activate the second time overheat, you will still deal 150% extra damage with both ash and burn. So every new overheat you'll do in every new rotation, as long as Firestorm is on the enemy, you can take advantage of incinerate as long as the boss or elite is not immune to crowd control. That's why it's awesome, that's why we shred the elites and bosses, that's why even the last Arbiter is no match for us and we deal a lot of damage for single target DPS, thanks to the Firestorm. This build actually has a lot of potential to run it without the Akari set. I'm still looking for some pieces so I can, for example, use Thermal Bomb instead of Heat Wave to take advantage a little bit on the Pax Tree for extra damage for overheat at least 25%, or we will see if I do double thermal bomb, if it's worth it or not. A reload boost, I don't use it because of a simple reason. I do want to hit my criticals with mage's range and proc fortress. And I don't want to keep switching weapons when I do that. Otherwise, I was going to use a reload boost. 
but now it's not worth it to just make the rotation, just go for criticals, rinse and repeat, it's a little harder, this is easier, and once we find all the pieces with anomaly power and the proper extra uh, apocalypse tier mods, this will probably have the best potential build for single target, for speed runs. All the speedruns you see in the background was my first or second try, I'm not a speedrunner, I don't try optimal routes or something, I just run around, kill the enemies and have a little fun. There are not any disadvantages for the build and the advantages is one of the fastest. The disadvantage is a little bit difficult to master for the mag to maximize your DPS, that's the only disadvantage. It needs a lot of practice compared to other builds that you can basically spam your skills, although it has raw power and by spamming your skills you will still deal a lot of damage, but to optimize a little bit your route and save a lot of seconds or a lot of minutes in general, you will need to just optimize your rotation and a little bit your route. So that was it for today's video, I really hope this will help you to build your own variation of the Anomaly Power Akari Set Pyromancer Speedrun build. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video, extra thank you in case you stick around until the end. Feel free to like and subscribe for more upcoming videos for Outriders, World Slayer and other video games. And as always, I wish you all a wonderful day.